Hi everybody. I'd like to make a quick video blog here about global warming, Al Gore and Senator Jim Inhofe and their latest episodes of debates concerning the issues of global warming. Briefly, I think that, you know, Al Gore, you know, used to be he's former pre vice president of the United States. He's an intelligent individual, and uh, he seems like a pretty cool dude, to be honest about it. Uh, and, and really, in all fairness to him, I, I, I see a lot of attacking going on on that debate they did on TV with Jim Inhofe and him. And um, I don't think it, you know, that really should be what's going on. I, I think he's gone to a tremendous amount of effort here and expense to try to say he's concerned about the well-being of our planet. Okay, it's everybody's world. Okay, and uh, so his views don't seem to agree with Jim Inhofe, who says it's poppycock and BS and whatever that there's no problem with global warming. And then behind Jim Inhofe in this in this debate or whatever discussion. He points out a, a blackboard with over a hundred uh, scientists' signatures and names and whatever that say there's no problem with global warming. Okay, so you, what are you going to do? Take this this effort and, and this information, all this energy and time spent by Al Gore and his friends, and you're going to take Jim Inhofe and the blah blah blah, and the, what are they going to do? Butt heads like rams up in the mountains, all right? But it doesn't accomplish much, in my view. And I think that, you know, in all fairness here, that, okay, like on the OETA television network, which is a local networking system on television, or the PBS, Public Broadcasting System, they have incredible, incredible shows here about, for example, I think it's Nova is one of them, about global warming issues. And these scientists, with all this gear and ca fantastic camera equipment, are up there in the North Pole and all this stuff and around the different parts of the country and the world, pointing out very, very believable, incredible aspects of what their concerns are about with regards to global warming. Okay? So somebody is telling you telling all of us something that's probably very true and then somebody's coming along and they're saying well yeah right it's chicken a little time the sky is falling or it's you know whatever hazing up whatever and it's that's not that's not fair but it's not going to do anybody any good and I think the realities the more realities are shown as time goes by about the conditions of the planet earth I think that people might say, well, it's, maybe it's a heads up time, okay? And maybe it's overdue and maybe it's past. I don't know. But I, I think there's over 6 billion people who inhabit this old dirt ball earth, okay? That's a lot of people. And then if you take a look at how many cars, school buses, city buses, 18 wheel trucks, lawnmowers, and riding lawnmowers, and you add all that up in just America. If there was any way to estimate a, a genuinely honest estimation of how many cars and buses, like I said, are uh, going around every day, 24-7 or some, whatever, I think it, it would blow you away on how many we're talking about are contaminating our atmosphere. There is no, uh, there aren't too many hydrogen cars, by the way, right now in uh, production. So that the emissions of most cars, even with a muffler and a catalytic converter, they're still going to have, you know, issues about carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and other contaminate, contaminant toxic substances for the planet Earth. Okay. Then if you took Japan, uh, you take... Uh, the population there, China has got a love affair going on with cars, apparently, according to the television news and stuff, too. And uh, I think there's 1.2, 1.3 billion people in China alone. Okay, then you have Germany, Russia, England, France, Vietnam, Korea, Taiwan, you name it. That's a lot of people and a lot of cars and a lot of buses and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, yes, I think if we were really to get real about this, it'd be kind of unnerving to, to look at the statistics and the facts, the facts of these are the realities of how many cars we estimate daily are operating on this 
dirt ball earth. How many buses, how many trucks, and you know, so forth. The factories, again, that's another thing about it. We're talking about pollution to the atmosphere, the ozone, the protective layers of our atmosphere for the planet Earth. And I think that, you know, you can't really just dismiss it because one person disagrees or a hundred. I think that there must be something going on that bears notice. And what's wrong with taking a look at those issues? You know, nothing. Uh, in closing, I met a lot of people here for quite some time that are local astronomers, and it's a big club of people that are exceptionally intelligent people, very well educated on the heavens, the constellations. I think there's 88 different constellations, you know, Ursa Minor and Major and all that. Anyway, as I've been out there for the, what they call the Mars Watch, for example, and it's outside the city limits to get away from the city lights, okay. And they have like these awesome, magnificent Mead telescopes, 11 inch, 14 inch Mead telescopes that'll just blow you away at the optics and the clarity of, oh my God, they're impressive. And they have all these other, you know, kinds out there too, don't get me wrong. Okay. But while I was out there, this one guy, he's got a, like a $12,000 specialty telescope and, and he let me look through it and he let my dad look through it and so forth. And it's really cool. It's very impressive. The thing was, he was saying, though, that you won't get as clear a picture of the, the planet Mars because of our Earth's contaminated atmosphere. He said that if we were out here looking at Mars through Hubble, which is out in space, then because of the avoidance and the non-existing atmospheres, we'd probably get a very, very crisp and clearer picture of the planet Mars. I wasn't able to see Mars as well as I had hoped to be. Uh, it's you know millions of miles away. You can kind of see the, the the interstate highway networking system on Mars and the uh, hotels, motels, you know, and some of the suburban areas. And the little green men, I couldn't see even two or three or one. No, not an area one. I, so I'm kind of skeptical or cynical about you know the existence of little green men from Mars at this point. In, as, in essence, though, that's <clears throat> being humorous, I think there's really time for all of us maybe to take a look, just take a look at these issues about global warming and decide for ourselves, you know, is it something that's credible, something to be concerned about, and what can we do to help that problem? Have a good one.